Hey everybody, welcome back to Investing with Wesley. Today I wanna to talk to you about the fastest way to pay off your debt. It's called velocity banking, otherwise known as the railgun method. Let's get into it. Now what gives the railgun method its speed is that you play around with the average daily interest earned on any of your debts. And I'll explain to you more about that a little later. But for now, let me explain to you how debts work. Whether it's a loan or a revolving line of credit like a credit card, whatever your debts are, they accrue interest daily. Now, most of us know what our interest rate is on our credit card or on a loan, with an example of about 10%. But 10% of your loan, that's the amount of interest you earn in a year because it's the APR rate, the annual percentage rate you pay. Now, unless we work on your credit and a bunch of other factors, we can't really lower down the interest rate per se, but we can play with it so that when it accrues interest on a daily basis, it's accruing interest on a much lower amount, thus making the effective interest rate much smaller. Let me put it into a little bit more perspective for you. Say you have $10,000 in debt with an average payment of $1,000 a month and an average APR of 10%. And for the sake of easy math, we'll make your monthly payment come on the 15th of every month, right in the middle of the month. Now, 10% of $10,000 is $1,000. That's $1,000 of interest that you would pay in this year alone. But because interest is accrued daily, you take $1,000 because that's how much interest that you would pay, divide it by 12. And that gives you how much interest you're expected to pay per month. Divide that number by 30 to figure out how much interest you accrue daily. And then multiply that number by the amount of days you're going to wait in that month before submitting your payment. As mentioned in my example, if you started out with $10,000 and did a $1,000 payment on the 15th of the month and your interest on this loan was 10%, for the first 15 days, you would accumulate about $41.60 worth of interest. After you submit your $1,000 payment towards your principal, you now only owe $9,000. So for the remaining 15 days of that month, interest is being earned on the $9,000 as opposed to the $10,000. So for the remaining 15 days of the month, the interest earned during that period at a $9,000 debt is $37.50. The average interest earned for that month is $39.55. This is the most common way people pay their debts off. Whether you're using the snowball method, the shotgun method, or the avalanche method that I talked about in a previous video, link up above, doesn't matter what method you're using, it's when you pay and how often you pay. Some people will pay their bills on the first of the month. Other people will pay on the 25th of the month. Some people will pay on the 15th of the month. It doesn't really matter what day of the month that you pay on. All that's calculated is how the interest is earned before and after each payment. And it's that key principle which gives the velocity banking or the railgun method, as I like to call it, such power when it comes to paying off your debts. Now, velocity banking is the act of adjusting or playing with the effective interest rate that you earn on all your debts. But the railgun method that I like to teach people that are more confident in their budget and how they spend money combines the avalanche method with the velocity banking method. We structure all our debts in order from greatest to least interest rate and then use the method that velocity banking teaches us to effectively change that interest rate and how it accumulates interest. Now let me show you the exact same example using the velocity banking method. Once again, we start with $10,000 in debt. And on this particular month, we are going to pay $1,000 towards principal and we're gonna pay on the 15th of the month. Now, just like the first scenario, for the first 15 days, the interest accrued is $41.60. Because for the first 15 days of you accruing interest, you haven't made a single payment. But when you make your payment on the 15th of the month, this is exactly where velocity banking takes off. Velocity banking, tells you to put every dime that you've earned that month into this debt. So on the 15th of the month, you put a payment of $6,000, effectively lowering the amount of debt you owe to $4,000. Now I know this might seem scary for some people because common sense takes over and says, well, if I put every dime I earn towards this debt, how am I gonna have any money to live during that month? I have other bills that need to be paid and I need to get gas and groceries. How do you expect me to do that if I put every dime I earn into this debt? Well, that's a great question and the answer to that, and the answer to that lies in how velocity banking works. Velocity banking works by using a revolving line of credit. And the reason we use a revolving line of credit similar to a credit card or a personal line of credit or even a home equity line of credit is because when using credit, you can take money back out. So in this scenario, you'll put every dime that you earn on the 15th as a giant payment. In this example, it was $6,000. 
For the rest of the month, you're charging all of your other bills and expenses onto a credit card something that's gonna earn you cash back or reward points. That way you're getting something extra for your efforts. And then on the 25th of the month, you take that money back out and use it to pay that credit card off completely. So effectively, you're spending the same amount of money you were going to spend anyway before doing velocity banking, but where your money has been placed and how it's been working for you is all the difference. Traditionally, your money would just sit in your checking account or maybe your savings account and you'd use it when you need it. But with velocity banking, your money is sitting inside your debts, lowering how much interest is being accrued. Let me show you the difference velocity banking made in this example. Putting a $6,000 payment on the 15th and then withdrawing $5,000 on the 25th, effectively making your monthly payment towards that debt $1,000, just like the previous example. Well, on the first 15 days, the interest earned is the same as the previous example. It's $41.60. But during the next 10 days, from the 15th to the 25th, the interest earned during those 10 days is $11.10. And for the final five days of the month, the interest earned is $12.50. So if you average all that out, the average interest that you earned during that month using the velocity banking method, still only finishing the month paying $1,000 because you took most of your money back out, the average interest earned in that month period was $21.73. Now, if you remember our previous example, the average interest earned was $39.55. Doing the exact same amount in payment, still only attacking your principal by $1,000, but just affecting how the interest has earned has saved you $17.82. Now, this is a relatively small number, but when you compound it by the amount of debt you owe or by the amount of income you put in there or when your payment is, you can really see how much interest you're saving on and how much you can put towards principal the following months. So just like compounding interest can grow your investments, velocity banking, when done properly, can have the same compounding effect to pay off your debts even quicker. This is how my wife and I paid off over $50,000 in debt in just under 11 months. Now let's talk about structured use of the railgun method. In order to do the railgun method effectively, you need two different lines of credit. You need a revolving line of credit with as low of an interest rate as possible. Most people will use a home equity line of credit because on average they're only paying anywhere from 4 to 6% on interest. But to the people that don't have a home or that don't want to risk their home of foreclosure in the event that they screw up and forget to pay, I recommend people use a personal line of credit that you can get at pretty much any credit union or bank. Now, if you go to a credit union, your chances of getting a lower interest rate are much greater than if you go to a bank. Remember, credit unions are non-for-profit while banks are for-profit. So if you have to become a member of a credit union to get their personal line of credit at a lower rate, in my eyes, it's worth it. But that's the first line of credit you need. The second line of credit you need is either a separate line of credit or a credit card that earns reward points or cash back. That way, while during the month you're spending money on gas, groceries, and all your other bills, you're getting something in return. And those two accounts are the only accounts you need to do the railgun method because all the money that you earn is going to go back and forth between those two accounts. To do the railgun method most effectively, you would start by maxing out your personal line of credit in the beginning of whatever month you decide to start. You do this as a giant payment towards whatever debt you're going to attack first. If you have $30,000 worth of student loans and your limit on your personal line of credit is $10,000, then you limit out. You take all $10,000 of your personal line of credit and put that as a giant payment towards your student loans. Now, in reality, you haven't really paid anything. You've just moved your debt from one account to another. You've moved your debt from student loans to a personal line of credit. But then every time you get paid, whether it's monthly, every other week, or every day, depending on what industry you're in, every time you make money, you put it as a payment towards your personal line of credit. That way, for as long as you possibly can throughout the month, the effective interest rate you're earning on your debt is much lower than what it would be if you just left your debt inside the student loan to earn interest the regular way. And then on the 25th of the month, you withdraw the minimum amount of money it takes to pay off your credit card and any other bills you may still have. That way, the maximum amount of money that you have at the end of every month goes to lowering the principal of your personal line of credit. 
and then every month after that, you just rinse and repeat the whole thing. Whatever the current balance is of your line of credit, you put as much money as you can into there while racking up the balance on your credit card with all your monthly spending. And the end of the second month, you do the same thing. Withdraw the minimum amount you're going to need to pay off that credit card. And once your personal line of credit finally reaches zero, if you have more debts, you just repeat the cycle. You max out again as one giant payment towards whatever debts you have left and rinse and repeat until all your debts are gone. And doing it this way, you'll also notice how as time progresses, the amount of money you have left over every month going towards the principal of your debts starts to grow, not only because you're saving money on interest, but because you're also paying off your debts. Therefore, you already have excess cash that goes towards principal. So just like I mentioned before, the compounding effect of paying down your debts using the railgun method is astronomical. Now let me show you one of the resources I use when I show some of my clients how velocity banking works and the power behind it. This is a calculator from replaceyourmortgage.com. Now I'm not sponsored by them and I don't really particular even endorse them, but the calculator they use on their website is by far the best and easiest calculator to understand that I've found so far. Now I should note here that this calculator is designed to do velocity banking in the form of a home equity line of credit and a not in a personal line of credit. But as far as how the math works, it's the exact same. The only difference between my method and the home equity line of credit is that using my method, you pay a little bit more in interest. That way you don't risk losing your home to foreclosure in the event that you mess up and forget to pay. So check out this website that I link in the description. You'll know you're on the right page if it looks something like this. And let me go over what each one of these means. The current balance is the amount you owe on all your debts. The interest rate is self-explanatory. It's the amount of interest that you're earning. Now, as far as the rate change is concerned, Revolving line of credits aren't fixed and the interest rate earned does vary with prime rate or the LIBOR rate depending on what bank you're using. So the rate change per year is how much the interest rate either goes up or down every year. Now if you use a personal line of credit, chances are your rate will never change. I know mine hasn't. Payoff goal again is self-explanatory. It's the amount of months that you're hoping to pay off your debts. I want to make sure you understand what net monthly income is. The net monthly income category is the number that you're going to place after all your taxes and deductions have been paid. The amount of money that actually hits your bank account every month is your net monthly income. Your expenses are the exact same. If you're watching this video, it's probably because you've seen my other video on how to get out of debt or how to create a budget. You're gonna to need to have a very bulletproof budget and be confident in the amount of money you spend because your monthly expenses cannot change. If they go up, then the amount of money that goes towards your principal goes down. And if the numbers get too out of whack, the entire method falls apart and you could be in serious trouble. So I encourage you to play around using this calculator and figure out just how long it would take using this method to pay off all your debts. And I could promise you that using the railgun method is a lot quicker than just using the snowball or avalanche method by itself. Hey guys, thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. I understand that the railgun method and velocity banking can be kind of a confusing topic to understand. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you found this video insightful and learned something from it, then please like and subscribe. That way I know how to tailor my videos to best suit you. I hope you found encouragement that you could pay off your debts way quicker than you think. And I hope you take the steps to implement this railgun method so that you could live a life completely debt free.